the M715 one and one quarter ton truck brings together two distinct stories into an achievement record unparalleled in the U.S. government's acquisition of wheel vehicles. The procurement story, detailing effective use of purchasing concepts beyond the normal methods and procedures. And the technical story of development, testing, and performance, uniquely different from the usual means applied to military hardware. On the procurement side, the events leading up to the M715 began with the government's decision to terminate purchasing of M37 vehicles after fiscal year 1964. Influenced by the desire to introduce a replacement for the M37 by fiscal year 1967, this decision caused adoption of an accelerated program. A program made up of two requirements. One, that proposed vehicles be produced to meet performance specifications determined by needs. And two, that vehicle testing be scheduled to take place after delivery of initial production vehicles. The development of the M715 followed a comprehensive set of performance specs for the vehicle desired. Off-the-shelf components formed the base for creating the unit. And modification brought all systems up to operational requirements. The purchase description procedure created several advantages. It made for faster procurement. A result demonstrated dramatically in the brief 66 days between contract award and the placement of the first prototype vehicle in actual test service. It offered the maximum use of the manufacturer's existing production capability and currently produced components. It circumvented many of the problems that accompany contractual designation of materials and components by basing acceptance on performance results. This difference alone provided latitude substantially affecting the vehicle quality and cost. And all these advantages consequently led to economies in the total production pattern. Economies reflected in a competitive bid price lower than the cost of the M37 truck, even though three years of escalating costs elapsed since the last previous M37 buy. Upon award of the contract, Research and development began in an unprecedented company program for vehicle engineering and testing. Aimed at reshaping stock components to comply with contract demands and to introduce newly engineered components where necessary, all R&D know-how was geared to developing and proving the M715 in the shortest possible period. The program's initial pre-production phase called for building three M715 prototype test units. Scheduled for testing consecutively, each of these three vehicles offered the advantage of accumulated buildup and test experience to be applied to the subsequent vehicle. A second phase involving four test units placed three more vehicles under pre-production government test evaluation and allocated one for buildup as an M725 ambulance model. The phase one testing made use of the proven test capabilities and facilities of the Nevada Automotive Test Center in Carson City, Nevada. Recognized as an independent and accomplished testing agency, NATC has performed numerous usage and endurance tests on both commercial and military vehicles for many years. With segments of its extensive test routes chosen to match up to government test conditions at Aberdeen, Fort Knox, and Yuma, the 180-mile NATC test course afforded the range of test driving characteristics singularly able to indicate the performance limits of the test rigs. 
The purpose of the 12,000 miles of tests was simply to locate deficiencies that might develop in parts and assemblies. The test cycle was structured for 25% or 3,000 miles of highway operation, half of it with a towed load. 60% or 7,200 miles over secondary roads, also with half of it towing a loaded trailer and 15% or 1,800 miles over cross-country terrain, a quarter of it with a towed load. Although tailored to exacting military requirements, the test course was intentionally made more difficult, more torturous, tougher, and more demanding than any continuous use conditions the vehicle would have to face. The M715 truck subjected to this test program must be understood technically first to see how its specifications fit military requirements, and second, how its design and performance equip it to withstand punishing test conditions. The M715 model is a general purpose cargo type. Its cab is equipped with a folding one-piece windshield a folding top, and side windows with regulators. The cargo body has folding longitudinal seats along both sides and roof bows supporting a folding canvas top. Power is supplied by a six-cylinder overhead cam, overhead valve, inline gasoline engine. Possessing high thermal and mechanical efficiency characteristics, the engine has spheroidal combustion chambers and a light rigid valve gear operated from a single cam lobe for both intake and exhaust valves. It develops 132 maximum brake horsepower at 4,000 RPMs. Maximum torque of 200 foot-pounds develops at 1,800 RPMs. The drivetrain is based on a four-speed transmission with manual shift and a dual range transfer case that splits power for use at the front axle as well as the rear. Propeller shafts carry power to the front and rear axles. Both are the full floating single reduction type equipped with a conventional differential with hypoid drive gears. Wheels are 16 inch and 916 all service tires are used. Front and rear suspensions use two semi-elliptical leaf springs. The electrical system in the M715 is a 24-volt negative ground submersible type conforming to military standards. This vehicle is the first military model to carry the new 60-ampere alternator as standard equipment. Special seals have been engineered into critical points to exclude mud and water. Such seals are included for the front end of the crankshaft, for axle pinions, for transfer case input and output shafts, and for shifter shafts. Venting of axles, bell housing, transmission, and transfer case is accomplished through an interconnected vent line system with the inlet at the air cleaner. Undependable poppet vents are not used. The 126-inch wheelbase M715 provides a payload capacity of 2,500 pounds for cross-country operation and 3,000 pounds for highway use. Towed loads of 2,840 pounds are permissible over cross-country off-road terrain and 3,590 pounds on the highway. Without towed loads, the vehicle can traverse grades in excess of 60%. Maximum sustained speed is in the 60 mile per hour range. As one M715 test rig after another went through the 12,000 mile cycle in Nevada, each established benchmarks indicative of the exceptional achievement and development pace generated in the whole program. In the 10 months from contract award to first production shipment, each successive vehicle contributed its own test data. 
and each helped to prepare for production vehicle test programs planned for various government sites throughout the country. Combined with the Nevada operation, the various locations where government testing was performed accumulated nearly 700,000 aggregate test miles. It is in these tests that the M715 has proved its superior operating characteristics in the various test situation categories. At Fort Knox, the vehicle demonstrated its matching of power and traction for operation in mud, a capability tested through the mud pit cycle in Nevada. In soft soil mobility tests at Aberdeen Proving Grounds, it outperformed the M37 by about 30% to further support early test findings. Aberdeen drawbar tests measured available gross force of the vehicle's driving wheels, less rolling resistance. They showed that the vehicle develops almost 79% of its drawbar pull potential when tested on dry level surface. Yuma Proving Grounds ran sand mobility comparison tests between the M715 and the M37 operating in sand dunes with each vehicle loaded with 2,500 pounds. The M715 exhibited superior mobility by negotiating dunes with and without a trailer at a higher average speed than the M37 attained. Moreover, because of its higher power, the M715 frequently traversed many areas where the M37 could not proceed. Vapor lock tests at Yuma showed that the M715 successfully meets the current military requirement and can be effectively operated under heavy load conditions and extremely high ambient temperatures without engine stoppage due to vapor lock. High altitude tests conducted near Flagstaff, Arizona by Yuma Proving Grounds demonstrated satisfactory general operating characteristics of the vehicle at elevations up to 10,400 feet, with significant advantages indicated in fuel consumption and drawbar horsepower. During tests, the engine started easily after standing overnight in below freezing temperatures. The engine was stopped and restarted several times with no discernible increase in time required to start at high altitude over that needed for starting at Yuma Proving Ground elevations. The vehicle successfully negotiated a natural 39% grass-covered slope, both with a 2,500-pound cross-country payload and with a 3,000-pound highway payload. At Fort Lee, Virginia, the M715 underwent tests for transportability, logistics over the shore, and line haul capabilities. In rail humping tests, the unloaded vehicle was chocked and lashed on an 80-ton capacity flat car. Humping tests were successfully completed without damage to the test vehicle. To determine the M715's capability as a non-swimmer in logistics over the shore operations, the vehicle carrying a cross-country payload of 2,500 pounds was offloaded into an LCM-6 from the USS Montreal at anchor about one mile offshore at Fort Story, Virginia. At the beach, the M715 forded through about a 30-inch surf. Measurements were made on the landing barge and runs were made on the beach. The M715 and trailer were returned to the Montreal. The tests indicated that the vehicle and trailer can be satisfactorily handled in landing situations as defined by the test conditions. In fording tests, the vehicle ran in saltwater surf about 30 inches deep. After each 15-minute fording operation, the vehicle covered a beach course and highway for a 15-minute period. Both in the water and on the beach, the vehicle was operated in high and low transfer case ranges and in two and four wheel drive. Deep water fording operation was tested in surf up to 60 inches deep. 
and data pertaining to necessary fording modifications to the vent system was accumulated for use in production models. Restarting after the engine was stopped for one minute in deep water was successfully accomplished repeatedly. In further transportability tests at Fort Lee, the empty test vehicle was loaded on an M52-M172 truck-tractor semi-trailer combination. Three-eighths inch chains were used to secure the vehicle, and the wheels were unchocked. The secured vehicle was transported over the movement adaptability course, and three emergency stopping tests were run at speeds of 10, 20, 30, and 45 miles per hour on a level dry highway. The vehicle sustained no damage during the movement or the stopping tests. Further testing transportability, an M62 wrecker towed the test vehicle without load in a freewheeling condition over the movement adaptability course, utilizing the standard tow bar secured to the tow shackles. The M62 wrecker exhibited no difficulty in towing the empty M715, either by lifting its front or its rear wheels off the ground. Towing speeds were achieved up to 40 miles per hour when towing over paved highways in freewheeling or on the rear axle. To compare line haul conditions with the M37 truck, both vehicles were tested over a 1,000-mile cycle on a round-the-clock schedule. With both vehicle and trailer carrying standard test payloads, the vehicles ran the test in 100-mile increments. Prescribed mileages were included on highways, over secondary roads, and through cross-country terrain, both with and without payloads and towed loads. Over every kind of surface tested, the M715 showed greater average speeds, yielded better fuel consumption, and achieved a significantly lower cost per ton mile, 54 cents, as compared to the M37's cost of 95 cents per ton mile. Even though airdrop capability was not required of the M715, Airdrop tests were conducted by the Army's Airborne Test Division at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. A C-130 aircraft flying at 130 knots at 1,500 feet dropped the vehicle. Ground wind was seven knots at impact, and the vehicle landed in the drop zone 75 yards from the target. A single unit has experienced 12 drops, five static and seven live. The last drop involved a vehicle fully loaded Only two chutes were open, and the test vehicle was started at once and driven back to the hangar area. In all the tests, the M715 was found capable of unrestricted movement under its own propulsion over highways 
as well as a complete range of other road and non-road surfaces. This truck also amassed considerable good reaction from personnel operating it because of its superior ease of handling and excellent riding quality. These characteristics noted by drivers and other personnel are advantageous in decreasing driving fatigue and in increasing component life because of the reduced road shock imposed. Designed to furnish a versatile basis for other vehicle configurations, the M715 has already been adapted under terms of the purchase agreement to provide an ambulance model. Designated the M725, it is mechanically and structurally similar to the M715, except for the body. The cab is of all metal construction, integral with the body and a sliding access door separates the rear compartment from the cab. The ambulance body is galvanized steel throughout for rust protection and is completely insulated with the floor pan undercoated. Double doors at the rear give access to the litter compartment with each door containing a window in its upper section. The ambulance compartment contains seating capacity for eight and one attendant or for five litter patients with one attendant. A special surgical lamp is mounted inside to assist in medical treatment. Two electrically powered ventilators and a combustion type heater are provided for patient comfort. The M725 is intended as a replacement for the M43 ambulance. A further development on the M715 chassis is a maintenance truck model. This M726 version has a cargo body that includes side compartments. Exterior doors on the sides give access to the compartments. The M724 cab and chassis will also be available to provide the basic vehicle upon which specialized bodies and equipment can be assembled. Development continues on the M715 to capitalize further on its versatility. Projects include evaluation of high flotation tires for increasing mobility in marshy swamp areas. Evaluation is going forward also providing a third seat in the cab and relocating the battery. In addition, a development program is underway to incorporate a road speed governor and a heavy-duty air cleaner to further the expected usefulness of the M715. With these four versions, the M724 cabin chassis, the M715 cargo carrier, the M725 ambulance, and the M726 maintenance truck, the original objectives of the purchase are already surpassed and the needs of the military for vehicles, both general cargo types and highly specialized adaptations, are being effectively satisfied. <laughs>